involved in growth projects? Why are you a feminist? The answers to these questions are simple. Why aren't you? Instead of asking me, why am I a feminist? Ask yourself, why aren't you? In a world where we're told we're born equal, but inversely we're not afforded the same rights and opportunities or amenities, how is this equality? My name is Yasmin Bilkis Ibrahim, and I'm talking about creating safe spaces in the global south. I'm the founding director of Girl Up Vine Club Syria. In the global south, or in developing countries, there are a lack of recreational activities to engage idle youths and unemployed youths, as well as school-going children. In 2016, Sierra Leone was named the worst country to be a girl in terms of gender equality. Sierra Leone is also one of the top 20 countries for female genital mutilation, for child marriage, and for infant mortality. In a world where girls are deemed as property and liabilities, rather than being seen as human beings, how can you not be a feminist? Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, a Nigerian writer and feminist, says, a person, a feminist, is a person who believes in the social, economic, political equality of the sexes. Not a man, not a woman, but a person. She also says that feminism is like pregnancy. You either are or you aren't. And I agree with her. In 2015, in August 2015, I met Ibrahim Jabi. Ibrahim Jabi is someone who claims to be a strong feminist. He told me about Girl Up Clubs in Sierra Leone. Girl Up Clubs are United Nations Foundation campaigns that started in the United States in 2010. They aim to promote the health, safety, leadership, and education of adolescent girls. There are over 60 in all the countries in the world, at that time, except Sierra Leone. So I started to read about it, and in October 2015, the US Embassy asked me to facilitate the International Day of the Girl Child. At that workshop, there were four schools present. There was St. Joseph's Convent, Methodist Girls High School, Vine Memorial Secondary School for Girls, and there were four schools present. <laughs> the speaker from Vine uh, impressed me the most, who ended up being the first president of Girl at Vine Club Sierra Leone. Her name is Suad. After the event, we talked, and to her utter delight, to my utter delight, she wanted to start Girl Up Club with me as well. So in January 2016, I went down to the Vine administration to tell them about my idea. They were very supportive and very accommodating. After which, I talked to the General Assembly. There were about 300 girls. I selected girls at the middle school level because you're supposed to catch them when they're young. At the end of the week, I had 23 girls sign up. And on January 15, 2016, we had our first Girl Up meeting. At the time, we were deciding what we should name the club. We wanted something that would bring prestige to the school and also something that would bring prestige to our nation. So we decided to call it Girl Up Vine Club Syrian. The first six months, we discussed sensitive issues that are considered taboo in Syria, such as menstrual hygiene management, female genital mutilation, rape, etc. At this time, I was able to, I was able to um, create a monthly curriculum and I was able to create a monthly curriculum that involves social issues and also life skills. Through this, I heard real adolescent girl problems and stories. Every Friday, I heard their stories from their own words. This was important because I'm a firm believer in changing the narrative, and it starts with us. So throughout this segment, we started to talk about newsflash. So newsflash became our thing. Every Friday, a few girls will tell us things that are happening in Sierra Leone, that are happening in Africa, 
and are happening at the world at large. And through these weekly assignments and the news flash, I noticed that their interest in reading, in writing, and research started to grow. Every week, they would give me newspaper snippets or quote a TV journalist saying, oh, I heard this on the radio, or I watched this on TV. A child cannot go to school and go home, and from home, she goes back to school. A child who only learns in school is an uneducated child. It is a fact that extracurricular activities aid in strengthening the mental capabilities of a person, contributing to her self-growth, development, and confidence. In fact, this is what led to the steep teenage pregnancy rates during the nine-month closure in the Ebola crisis, and also the reason why Sierra Leone has still a high teenage pregnancy rate today. Within months, girls who shied away from sharing news started sharing news. And also, I told them that if your average does not continue to stay the same or increase while in Girl Up, you'll have to leave the club. Because though it's a social educational club, the reason why I'm at your school is because you attend school. And the next semester, the weeks that followed through, and now, two and a half years later, do you know how many girls have asked to leave the club because of this? None. Fast forward to two and a half years later, 70 girls later, 15 projects later, 20% of the girls' averages stay the same, and 80% of their averages increase. Girls who used, to, who used to believe sexist traditional norms now question the status quo. Girls who used to be on the sidelines when their friends were bullied now proudly tell me that they intervened. Because at Girl Up, we teach, we learn, we inspire. Over the years, I've challenged the girls, not because I don't like them, it's because I like them. Because life will always be a little bit difficult for girls like us, girls of color, girls of African descent, girls from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. During our time at Girl Up, Girls have learned that they can not only um, possess academic intelligence, but now they know that they can be emotionally intelligent, spatially intelligent, existentially intelligent, and interpersonally intelligent. Our middle school graduates have gone on to do amazing things. Suad is now the president of our organization at St. Joseph's, and she's a lead child presenter at a leading production in Sierra Leone. Marima has been prefect for two years, and she's always top of her class. Alima Tussandi is an undefeated debating champion for the past three years. Through the creation of safe spaces, safe spaces for marginalized groups in the, globalized, in the global south, this triggers potential because it contributes to national development and also helps to change the narrative of Africa at large. So I know you're asking in the audience, or if you're at home, what can you do? You can start by volunteering. You can go down to your local shelter. You can talk to girls at your school, or boys. You can, if you are a social media influencer, you can talk on your platform. If you have the knack for writing, or speaking, or blogging, you can do that. But 2.5 years later, I still get asked the same question. Why do you do this? Again, my answer is simple. I don't want Fatima to drop out of school. I don't want Marima to marry a man five times her age. I don't want Aminata to engage in transactional sex just to buy sanitary pads or to afford her school tuition. I don't want Aisa too to think that her only accomplishment is marriage. And I don't want Safiya too to think that she's a liability because she's a girl. We do this because girls and women of the present, past, and future of the world. We do this because we don't want more girls to become hashtags on social media because they're victims of circumstances. We do this because we want girls to be presidents, policy makers, child protection rights activists, and presidents. I'll leave you with a quote today by Marianne Williamson, poet. She says, and as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give permission for others to do the same. 
As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. The creation of safe spaces, safe spaces in the global south not only triggers but releases unknown and hidden potential in the beneficiaries and inversely releases the same in yourself you never knew you had. I've come to learn that triggering potentials is a two-way street and a journey I will now take on for the rest of my life as I continue my work with Girl Up. Thank you.